up, guys, and welcome to another edition of Rose and Pulse. Alongside my partners, Roberto and... I don't know who he just showed up. Is that... Is that, uh... I was in rehab. Armin, isn't it? No. I was, uh... I was breaking over thermometers and drinking mercury. Madness. I thought you were in Africa. See so you were here. No, that was Dave Chappelle. Oh. You were, you were murking it? I was murking. It was a joke. It, it was attended as a joke when we said it on a video originally, but it turned we, into uh, a terrible yeah, actually, habit. You actually legitimately started drinking mercury out of thermometers. Yes. It's not good. You shouldn't. We always intended that as a joke. We never, we never meant to actually. But you recovered though, right? It's a, it's a working process. Okay. I'm actually high as shit right now, Merc. <laughs> <laughs> I'm murking so is, hard right now. He is now. murking out like a motherfucker. Uh, our own Jeff Hardy. We have our one and only Ryan back with us. Um, it's been a long time coming. Uh, we have missed him dearly on our shows. Um, <laughs> and it's good to have him back. And I know all of you out there have had comments. We actually had comments about that. Really? They were worried about you. They thought you have died. Well, I can. if you want to personally send me your address, and you can send me actual thermometers or money for <laughs> thermometers... Anything that he can get his hands on, as yeah. far as Merc gang goes. Yeah. They locked me in the basement, guys, and they finally let me out. They finally, yeah. We they, just, actually, we just, he broke out. Every couple hours, we would just slide an empty thermometer underneath the door, and oh, I was we, just keep them, we would keep them going. He finally has gotten out of his cell. Oh, good term there for this <laughs> edition. Uh, and he's nice. uh, he's murking out all over you guys now, so it's uh, it's time to get at it. Um, we're glad to have him back, and I know all of you out there as well. Uh, we're going to have the pre-show here. Um, just run it down really quick. Uh, they did that Ms. Dow TV with um, Miz and uh, nothing really much here. They had Shames on the screen. They did a little cheesy fucking thing where he kicked the camera, and the camera went off. Pretty dumb. Uh, they did a random Mark Henry Bo Dallas match. Nothing really there. Um, Bo Dallas said he lost, but in the life records, I think he said yes, he's records. still undefeated. He is still undefeated. He's Bo Washington. He is Bo Washington because the city he was in had his last name. He was yeah. not very happy with that, so that he wanted to be known as Bo Washington. Upsetting. So uh, Mark Henry over Bo Washington in a squash match there. Um, Getting into the actual uh, card here, we have the uh, start off hot with the two out of three falls match for the IC title with uh, champion Dolph Ziggler going up against Cesaro. I am expecting this match to be really good. It was, it was pretty good. I mean, two out of three falls, you're hoping it'll have some time to it. Unfortunately, WWE here recently, when a match like this, they kind of give two short falls and then the winning fall. Unfortunately, this one ended in two falls. It was kind of a weird sweep um, with uh, Dolph Ziggler getting the win, get both quick falls, which was good to see. I know Cesaro kind of hurt his arm earlier, and they're kind of shaking it off and everything. But uh, it was good to see Cesaro look strong, but yet Dolph Ziggler getting the two quick wins, be able to kind of go undefeated against him in that match, and uh, you know getting the win and retaining that title, and hopefully carries on to bigger, better things for uh, Dolph. Yeah, really great stuff there. Dolph retaining at least they they're they're solidly behind him there, and the two straight wins. He's, was getting, kinda, he's getting the big push. It was kind of out of nowhere. So uh, good start there to the card with Dolph getting the win over Cesaro in the IC title match. Uh, next up, we had our amazing <laughs> stipulation matchup here where the loser of this match must become the winner's personal assistant, and if they did not comply with the rules, with said rules, uh, they would be forced to quit World Wrestling Entertainment. Um, we had the battle between Brie Bella, Brie Bella and Nikki Bella. Um, shockingly, for a Divas matchup and for a matchup between Brie and Nikki Bella um, was not terrible by any means. I mean, we've seen worse Divas matches. D or D's matches here. Uh, still nothing special by any means. Um, Nikki getting the win here, and now we'll, we already saw later on in the night where um, she uh, made a smoothie for Nikki, but it was not Nikki's smoothie, it was Bree's smoothie, and then it ended up being poured over the top of Bree Bell's head. Um, so we'll be seeing all those kind of shenanigans for the next month, which will be terrible. Um, so yeah, Nikki Bella getting the win there, and she's uh, now has her bitch, her bitch, her sister as her bitch for a month. <laughs> Um, so that'll be some enjoy enjoyment to see. Uh, next up, we have the uh, WWE Tag Titles Line win champions Golden Stardust went up against the Usos. Yeah, this was uh, this was a pretty pretty decent tag match. Uh, these guys have uh, been working together for a while now, and and I don't know they 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 have some chemistry, but they they always these matches always end up at the end like in a, in a flurry of, of of moves, high fly moves, this this and that, blah blah blah. But they're really letting. Um, Golden Stardust 
uh, run run with it uh, for a while and, and letting them um, you know see what they can do. Um, I guess they're I guess they're playing heels, but they don't really come off as heels. They're kind of just playing this weird kind of deal, and they like finger touch people in the the, the crowd, but they're also heels. Um, I do like to give a, a, a shout out to the Usos. I really think that they're they're doing a great job right now as as, as holding down the tag team division. Have been there for a while, and um, they keep you know they put them against all kinds of people, and then they keep being in that that tag title picture. And and you know in in WWE right now, the the tag team division is not very stacked, and it hasn't been for a long time. But you know, for to have a consistent team like that to always just keep being in title matches and keep providing good matches, and these guys are just a good team. They're they're really good, and and, and it's exciting to see what they're going to do. But you know, Golden Stardust getting the win here, and um, and a pretty pretty decent uh, tag team match, and you know, uh, hopefully we'll see what they're going to do with these guys, and and be great to find another ta- team to add to this, and maybe do some 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 triple tag matches with some some ladders. That'd be exciting. That'd be, some good stuff. That would definitely, that'd be exciting because uh, you know that's how you you put over your, your tag teams who are not doing anything. Uh, if TNA had one thing going right for a while, they were they were trying to get the Wolves put over in, in that that little series they had. So this is <laughs> that'd be a good thing for WWE to try to do and maybe bring up the Ascension. I think we talked about that in, in, in NXT. So a uh, pretty decent match here, but um, overall it's not bad. Yep. Next up, we had the uh, number one contenders Hell in a Cell match for the WWE World Championship, future World Championship shot uh, between Randy Orton and John Cena. Um, pretty good stuff here, you know. Like we, uh, me and Quaddy said in the uh, preview, it's it one it's it's one that went under the radar. Everybody was, you know, we've seen this match a million times with Randy Orton and John Cena. They had a great promo package uh, before this matchup, talking about different ri- rivalries, uh, whether it just be in sports. Or in wrestling, and really bringing that into you know the history between John Cena and Randy Orton, how their you know careers kind of parallel each other, where they came up about the same time, the World Championships, this and that. Um, so pretty good package. WWE's always known for doing that. Um, yeah, some alright stuff here. Um, you know, we had some teases for uh, you know Randy getting the win. They tried the the punt spot, which I, I was telling the guys <laughs> that you know I really thought because going back to the 2009 Hall and Cell that they had the. Um, you know, Randy Orton won that with a punt. I was like, man, the only way John Cena is going to lose this match is if he gets punted. Um, it's really the only way I saw it. And, and, you know, seeing it here in the middle of the card, that's your typical spot you see John Cena lose matches in. You're definitely not going to see it in the main event. It's rare um, to definitely see that. You usually shove kind of those random John Cena matches where, you know, he's, you know, either putting over somebody or he ends up losing a match out of nowhere. Um, in here, that's the only reason I could have saw that. But with the talks of Randy Orton's possible face turn in the future with, um, the kind of the news coming in that, of Randy Orton's injury, I believe it's his back that's been injured, and having the end of this uh, matchup end with a AA off the top rope through a table, you know, really focusing on, you know, maybe this could be some time off for Randy Orton. Who knows? You could probably, we'll probably end up seeing him tomorrow. But um, I know it's looking like it could be down the road something with Rollins and Randy and flipping Randy Orton face with, you know, how stale Randy Orton's character has been for quite some time now. But, um, so pretty good stuff here. Like it's your typical John Cena, Randy Orton. It really didn't do anything superseding anything we would expect, but it wasn't, you know, bad by any means. So some pretty good stuff here um, inside Hall in Cell and John Cena moving on for his future opportunity for a WWE World Championship. Yeah, with Orton's back injury coming out, I guess is a disc or something. Um, everything they did with the steps and the chairs and the tables, he kind of it looked like they were kind of trying to work off of that injury and kind of angle the match toward everything there. Um, with Cena getting a win, it was kind of predictable. I think everybody's seen this coming, doing Lesnar, seen the three, or whatever it's going to be now. And just continue with that, and maybe Randy, you know, takes some time off, comes back as a face, maybe away from the authority. And I know there's even been talk of Cena eventually turning heel, and if you kind of look at this match, all the stuff he did with the chairs and the stairs and the tables, it didn't look like a true face doing that stuff. It looked like he can be, you know, on the process of trying to turn heel which he needs to. It's been stale for the last 10 years. But that video package was just kind of some interesting stuff from the past, seeing how these two careers almost parallel. They, you know, feud in OVW, they feud in WWE all this time. Hopefully they can either freshen it up or not even feud them anymore. Yeah, um, it was, you know, I think it was a good idea that they they set it up like this, you know, obviously because Lesnar wasn't going to be there and, and you know, a lot of people bitch about that being a thing where, you know, he, he's only set slated for so many, you know, shows or whatever. Um, but to me, I, I, you know, I, other than having, you know, the main event with, with Ambrose and Rollins, you know, you, you got to have your two veteran guys. And, and in either way, like, you know, if they would have flipped this and had, you know, 
uh, you know, the main event be flipped with with the, the guys or whatever. I, it really wouldn't have mattered to me, but I think it was a good idea to because that feud was already embedded into the you know for so many years that they could just pick it right back up. It's one of those things that can just always throw together and then be like, hey, listen, we don't have Brock Lesnar here, and we need to do this, we need to do that. Let's just put you know these guys in a match, and they always produce like uh, you know decent to to good matches. And um, this was pretty okay. Like it was decent. It was like it wasn't you know one of the best selling cell <laughs> matches I've ever seen, but. Um, you know, they, they picked their spots and, and Orton actually looked very good in this and, you know, Cena, you know, played off of it. He took a lot of, you know, spots and bumps and stuff, but you know, the, the finish with the AA off the, off the you know, rope or whatever, top rope or whatever to the, you know, the table is, it's kind of a spot I, I expected to see how this match would end. And, um, like I said, they did focus on him, you know, he took some spots to his back quite a, quite a, quite a few times. So. I don't know what their plan on is is to do with that, but you know, him turning him face is something that they might have to do. You know, with the with the amount of injuries that the guys they have out the reins, and um, you know, the the Brian Danielson, Daniel Bryan, <laughs> whatever you guys want to say. Uh, but you know, it's the, your faces aren't there. You know, it's it's you know, you have your, your Dean Ambrose and you have John Cena. Like that's your guys, your top guys right now, and it's crazy to say that, but. You know that's something they might have to do, but like I said, this is a pretty pretty decent match, and, and you know it was they definitely put it right in the middle of the card where it did, you know needed to be. Right. Next up, we had the U.S. title line when champion Sheamus went up against the Miz. I was just watching you know Miz Dow come out and just do everything that Miz did. If Sheamus hit him, you know Miz Dow fell, and he did he took a couple Miz Dow took a couple spots on the outside to himself, and it looked hard. I it's, they need to do something different with that. I mean, it's it's funny to watch, just watching Miz Dow be like the Miz and be the stunt double of him. But, you know, the match itself was actually, it was pretty decent. I mean, it was really, really short. Um, just Sheamus kind of played up to it at the end with the two guys. He would do something to uh, Miz, and uh, Sandow would do the same thing, lift his arm or whatever. It's like, he tried to get, the, Sheamus was trying to get the crowd to laugh. They did the YMCA. Sheamus picked Miz up and was doing the whole thing, and then Sandow started doing it the same with him. They just need to end Miz Dow and that, because Miz Dow has a lot more talent than the Miz does. <laughs> That's the most entertaining <laughs> thing about this whole feud, is, da is Damien... I'm not even going to say Miz Dow. Screw that. Damien Sandow. It, it upsets me that they but, did uh, that to him. Yeah, but... Sheamus kept the win and retained the U.S. title in this. Sheamus retaining the U.S. championship in that one. Next up, we had Big Show going up against Ryan's new boy, Rusev. Yeah, uh, you know what? It's it's been a while since they've really like. I'm gonna have to cut you off. Are we going to see a Ryan Sev character? Ryan, maybe a Ryan Sev. You know, every <laughs> now and again, I, I I I pick a gym. You know, I pick a guy that I feel like's gonna be there. You know, the the Del Rio and then the, the Brodus Clay and then the, all of a sudden, you know, two years later, they're all everyone's gone. <laughs> so I don't want to get ahead of myself. Because we didn't. Yeah, we didn't see like you come in dressed up like Alex Riley with the money in the bank bank briefcase back in 2011. It's a real thing. We didn't see the Ryan Soros gimmick that was going to take off. Yeah. So you're on a hot streak so far. I know. It's all that Merkin, man. You got to get off the Merk. I got to stop bro. the Merk. <laughs> you got to stop, stop Merkin. Okay, so we, 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 see, we stop there. Everybody you gimmick like gets fired. How about you gimmick that like That is really stuff? true. I mean, <laughs> that is that is honestly, that's true. It is, it is a real thing. But you know, the difference between, I guess, Del Rio had that run. And he, I could see him being... But obviously the other ones were kind of just funny gimmicky things. <laughs> um, I, I like Rusev, and, and I think it's been a while since they've they've made a guy. They're trying to make a guy super dominant, and and my big fear is that they make him you know beat guys like Mark Henry, and, and they you know they have him beat Big Show here. And, and this match was pretty dramatic. Like there was it wasn't these mat type of matches aren't like you're not going to look for great wrestling quality. You're just going to be like. You have the American guy versus the Russian guy or whatever, and then you like you're always cheering for whoever. But, oh, Kogan. Yeah, <laughs> but they, you know, it's funny because they just, I like he's, I, I think he's a pretty good big guy. Like I think he can work pretty well, and it's just it's upsetting to see that he's gonna they're gonna build him up like this, and then the the climax of this whole situation is is probably going to end up being him versus Cena, and they're going to, you know, take one of their top guys who's going to be a heel and who's going to be beat everybody, and then they're going to have Cena beat him. That's just how they run, the, you know, they run it. Um, but this match was, you know, okay. Like, it was what I thought it was going to be, and, you know, they put these big guys in there, and they just keep running with Rusev and letting him get these wins, and, and I hope they do something with him, you know. they that I always say that with, with when they bring in new guys, but um, 
I really like the way this guy works, and, and you know, a lot of times when they put these guys with these, this is where you're from gimmick. You're from Russia. That's you. You're going to be this Russian guy. You're Shamish. You're an Irish guy. You're going to do this. Like, you know, you're whatever. Like, that, that, you, a lot of times that never catapults you to a main event status. Kenzo Suzuki. Kenzo, yeah. <laughs> status. Super high. But, um, but yeah, you know, and, and, and Rusev getting the win here, and, 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 and I think that was the right call. Like, there's no reason for a big show and Mark Henry to to beat a younger guy. I think the reason is to to build this guy up and to beat guys like those who are kind of hard, unstoppable guys to beat by most people. So um, I thought it was the right move, and, and and the match was okay. So hopefully we'll see what they're going to do with this. Rusev getting the win in that matchup there. Next up, we have the Divas Title Line win champion, AJ Lee, went up against my girl, Paige. Um, yeah, just totally useless. Um, just like how I thought the preview, uh, in the preview, that this was totally useless. Um, we had uh, Alicia come out there with Paige. Um, Paige doesn't need best friends. Um, heels don't need friends. Uh, they don't. So just don't put Alicia Fox out of all people with her. Um, they had her break off here, AJ getting the win. Um, and really just nothing special by any means. Um, we could go on and on about how they could do so much more with um, the talent that's really, uh, you know, that is an AJ Lee and that is a Paige, you could do so much more with these girls and they just don't because it's the same formula that they would, you know, that we always get. Um, and I really thought they were on the right path with Paige. Um, and it's not that they could, you know, can't turn things around because they definitely can. Um, but yeah, I, I have no problem with AJ Lee being the champion. I think she's a good worker. She's, you know, got the character and she plays it to a T. Um, but I, I just think there's so much potential with Paige that they could get with, and I think that, you know, it's almost turning to the, to the point to where AJ Lee's almost a veteran in this, when really she's not. I mean, really, she's got a lot of career, you know, ahead of her, and th they're treating it like she's just knocking down the competition, and, you know, there's nothing really left, you know? There's, there's nothing to really go to um, if you don't, you keep flip-flopping the title like a piece of candy, and you just keep running the same bullshit every single week and every single pay-per-view. You know, nobody's going to be able to get up behind it. And there, there's really no use in us going in depth about fucking the Divas division and everything that they could possibly be doing um, because they keep doing the same old shit. Um, but just kind of disappointing because, you know, these, these like I said in the preview, these this could really be, you know, this generation's Trish Stratus and Lita. I mean, it really could. Um, and and it's, it's unfortunate that that's not what we're probably going to be getting because this is just how they continue to run this shit. So AJ getting the win um, in that matchup there and retaining the Divas title. Next up, we had our main event. Um, it was a Hell in a Cell match uh, between Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. Um, all of us really looking forward to this one. Very happy um, that they made this the main event. I made a you know comment before this saying they really needed to go out there and almost pull like a uh, unbreakable 05 with AJ Joe and Daniels and really say like, okay, this is our mark. You know, we had injury after injury after absence after absence and all these kind of you know this is finally we get this spotlight, we get this time, let's go out there and you know put on something special. Um, and it was something indeed um, special. There was a lot of great moments in this match. It was on to a great pace um, throughout this. Um, I do want to say something that I, I made a mention of. They started this um, just like they did you know, with Mankind and Taker in 98, King of the Ring. They started on top of the cell. I love that. It, it fits Dean Ambrose's character to a T, um, having the, the New Age Stooges with uh, Joey Mercury. Mercury? Merkin? And... Um, uh, <laughs> Jamie Noble starting up there and having Ambrose destroy him with the kendo stick and starting the match up there with Rollins. Well, not really starting the match, but starting up there with Rollins and Ambrose. We had that side spot off the uh, cell onto both the tables, doing the headbutt and going through that. Great spot. Um, came off great on TV. Looked outstanding. Both went through it like the exact same time. And both um, didn't look like they murdered each other, but definitely made it look like a really great spot. Um, to me, I just felt like it was just a misplaced spot, but then once we got it at the end of the match, what we ended up getting at the end of the match, which I'll get to in a second, um, it kind of makes sense. Once you once you see what ends up going down, they kind of need to do at the beginning because you had a definitely a beginning, middle, and end to this matchup with what they ended up delivering here. Um, and it was on pace for some great stuff. We didn't have too much, you know, cane interaction. We just had the fire extinguisher spot, which led to uh, the buckle bomb, power bomb through the uh, table on the outside. Pretty much just started out like a brawl. Um, just basically turned the, the cell match into a brawl here, street fight in the middle of it. Um, some really quality spots. Um, had a cool table spot with the elbow drop with Ambrose going off the side of the ring onto Rollins. So um, put on some good stuff here. And then we got to the end of this. Um, I believe Ambrose was getting ready to set up uh, that uh, cinder block spot where he's going to do the curb stomp just like Rollins did to Ambrose um, a month or so ago on Raw that took him off TV. And uh, we had the lights go out. We had the, the weird backwards gibberish of Bray Wyatt 
Um, and we had just, as Dota B continues to always produce, which is great production value, because this spot that they had for this return of Bray Wyatt was fucking awesome. I mean, it was really cool. They had the whole backwards lip fucking gibberish, whatever the hell that they had in the middle of those amazing Bray Wyatt promos that they've been running on Raw's the last couple of weeks and had just the, the light in the middle of the lantern in the middle of the ring, and then just did this fucking holographic fucking weird shit with this. Couldn't even tell what the image was, but it was like of a person. Um, and it kind of shades of the fucking shit they did in Star Wars with fucking Princess Leia talking to Obi-Wan. And, um... Or as my dad said, a Tupac hologram, which kind of looked, like, <laughs> looked like that too, honestly. Uh, but had the hologram and then had fucking Bray Wyatt run through the smoke and run through the light and attack Dean Ambrose. Um, really cool, really dynamic kind of return. Um, makes absolutely no sense, but um, right now I could give a shit because it was fucking awesome. It was really cool, well produced, um, nothing fucked up because there was a lot of things that could have fucked up in that, in that return spot that could have just came off really, really bad and looked really, really cheesy, but it looked really fucking cool. And I really think if you could like pause in the middle of him running through that smoke, you could almost see like two fucking people running through that damn thing. It looked really, really cool. Um, pulled it off great. I was waiting to see what they were going to do with Bray Wyatt. I'm extremely intrigued by him. Definitely one of the ones that I tune into. One of my favorites definitely on um, in all of pro wrestling. So great to see what we're going to be doing here with, uh, you know, a possible Dean Ambrose, Bray Wyatt feud, which um, is totally out of nowhere. Um, looked like they were, you know, talking was like, is, you know, the Wyatt family going to be part of the authority with, you know, coming in and helping Rollins? But Rollins was kind of shocked, not really knowing what's going on. So it doesn't really look like that. A lot of um, a lot of things could be up in the air here. A lot of you know speculation could be made, but uh, one thing is for sure: that was pretty fucking badass, and definitely a thumbs up to WWE's production crew because that was really fucking cool. Um, pulled it off great. Pretty solid work here in this. It was really on pace to be something you know really really good, um, but definitely cutting this off and going kind of a sideways direction here with uh, you know Bray Wyatt's return and attacking Dean Ambrose and. Um, really what that could set up, which could be something really special with two just dynamic characters and the most dynamic characters, I would say, um, in the WWE and in, in all of pro wrestling right now. Um, so that could be some really great stuff, um, but uh, some pretty quality stuff here in the main event. Um, Seth Rollins getting the pin after um, uh, the attack by Bray Wyatt on, uh, on Dean Ambrose there. So um, good stuff there. Seth Rollins getting the win with uh, Bray Wyatt returning that Hall and Cell match. Probably one of the greatest, you know, returns that WWE's done. They did all this kind of stuff with Taker back in the day, and it's it's almost like we talked about this during the during what was going on. It's almost like they're trying to make Bray Wyatt like an Undertaker type. You know, obviously him returning and the lights going out, the lantern and the hologram, which was just like J Man said, just totally badass. Him running through and attacking him, no one to know what was going to happen. It's almost like they try to take you know some of the Undertaker what he's done in Hell in a Cell by starting on top. Like Taker did. Having, you know, Kane debuted the first Hell in a Cell, having Bray Wyatt coming back here. It's like they've tried to take all the Hell in a Cells and trying to combine it, different spots and whatnot. You know, it didn't make sense at first having that table spot, them coming off the side of the cage at the beginning. But once it got all done and you're able to just, you know, process everything that happened, it made perfect sense. You had the big spot at the beginning, you're not sure is it over, is it going to end this way? Then they start the match and they get in the Hell in a Cell. Just have, you know, all the weapons, all this, this actual brawl they had. Just Ambrose looking like a badass trying to kill Rollins. And it's just then this all happening, and now you're like, now what? Now you get to tune in to Raw to see what happens, and tune in, you know, to Survivor Series, which will be to live. And just to see what's going to happen next. You know, Ambrose, Bray Wyatt feud, never would have thought of it, but I'm excited to see it. Uh, yeah, um, this is something uh, I've been looking for for a long time. Um, a match like this because um, back when you know obviously when these guys were, were grinding the indies um, <laughs> you know I was I was a fan of both of these guys and it's something that when when you see a guy like you know a Daniel Bryan get his chance and when you see a guy you know like Punk finally get his chance and guys you you knew and, and on the indies and you were like man I would never think I would ever see this kind of thing take place and you finally you're like okay they're gonna let these guys main event this they're they're excited and you know and we're gonna see what they're gonna do, and, and I, I think they both went out there with the intentions to be like, let's let's give these people something <laughs> exciting, you know, and, something and to talk about, something to talk about, and, and clearly, you know, that's what they did. They did a lot of great spots, and, and you know, I can't say this was a great match, but it was it was extremely entertaining. It was kind of awkwardly paced how they moved things around and, and did spots. You know, it was a bunch of 
you know, sell spots and stuff, and obviously that's what they wanted to do with the, they, you know, the first spot. We were a bit confused at how, why they would do that. Obviously, when they get towards the, you know, the end and they do the, the whole thing with Bray Wyatt, but um, but yeah, you know, and, and getting their time to shine for both of these guys is, is really great. Uh, what they did with Bray Wyatt, I thought was was fantastic, and and I started thinking about it when it when it ended. Or when they were when it was taking place, I was like, just like Jay Man, I was just like, what? This doesn't make any sense. Why? Why would they do this? And then I started thinking back of all the situations that they had with Bray Wyatt. He always, since they've had him with any feuds he's been in, he's always been the aggressor. He's always come out of nowhere for no reason and attacked somebody. Yep. Jericho, yep. Cena, all these guys for no reason and said, you know, and then and then the next night he explains, I don't like your face. I want to <laughs> eat it. I don't like John Cena. I want to kick him in his balls. Like, he does whatever he wants to do, you know, and that's that that kind of goes with this gimmick. Like, okay, he's, it he's makes... He's picking his own feud. Right, and he's making... It, it makes sense because that's how he he started out. And, unpredictable. Unpredictable, yeah. And, that, and, and, and the setup with the lantern and the smoke <laughs> and the hologram was, was awesome. And at first, you know, they, they had him mumbling something in some kind of other language or it was backwards. Some I don't tongue. Know, some right. tongues or something or other. And, and it was blacked out and we didn't know what was going on. I mean, it was a return of Bray Wyatt and... It was exciting because he's been off television for a while, and the thing about it, Bray Wyatt, and we talked about it when we were watching pay per views. You know, it's interesting he wasn't on this show that before this. You know, we were talking, and a guy like Bray Wyatt, when they feud him with somebody, they you you have to you can't do a feud where you have like Mark Henry or Big Show just feud with one of your mid carters about nothing. Like he he has to have some kind of underlined like reasoning story. and story because yeah. that's how his character is, and that's how they you know you make that work. They you know. Did stuff like that with the Undertaker as well, where they picked his battles and they made a a, a feud out of a storyline and blah blah blah. Like that's how they have to do this. Taking two of your most outrageous and crazy characters that you have right now in your company, and you're going to probably you know mix them together and and just to say go, cut promos, do this, do crazy things, <laughs> do whatever you want to do, blah blah blah. Because you know that's that's what they got to do right now, and, and with guys out and injured and you know all this stuff. That it's an interesting thing that they're going to try here, and, and obviously they're going to move shift shift guys around and do stuff. But this is how the feud had to end. I, I unfortunately I would have liked to, a clear cut winner, but you know it's setting up for something. Like I said, it doesn't make sense. But then after you think about it, okay, um, that's how Bray Wyatt picks his feuds. Nobody comes after Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt shows up when he feels like it, and he just attacks somebody that he just feels like attacking. Like that's that's just how he that's just how his character's always been, and it, it kind of makes sense. You know, even though it was out of nowhere, the way they did it was awesome. Yep. So, um, pretty great. You know, overall, the whole, the whole overall, you know, spectrum of the match, like what they were trying to do and and set up, it definitely made these guys, uh, uh, you know, a notch up higher to making that main event level. You know, where you want to see these guys in the future. So, hopefully, we'll see what's going to happen uh, tomorrow on Raw. Yeah. Who doesn't want to see the Joker versus Hannibal Lecter? Right. <laughs> right. Who doesn't want to see that? I sure as fuck do. That's that, that that's for damn sure. Uh, so good stuff to end there. Um, awesome. Just just great. I mean, I can't wait to go back and check it out again because it was uh, really one of those things. And it's always cool when you get like edge of your seat type shit. Like, what the fuck's going on? Like, that's definitely what we got there. So that was really great. I haven't seen that kind of unpredictable stuff in, in quite some time. So great way to end the um, Hell in Cell pay-per-view. And, um, yeah, this will now wrap up for WWE Hell in Cell 2014 the review for my partners Robert and Ryan. I am J-Man, and thank you for watching another edition for us in Pulse. Pulse. Best wrestling world.